let's take a look at GGMDA1, uh, worksheet number seven, all things about prisms. And really this is about the development of prisms formula, as well as understanding volume and things like that. This is also one of the ones that's specifically stated in the objective, so it has a, a greater focus than, than, than others. Uh, first of all, let's talk about just the characteristics of prisms. Prisms will have two identical bases. Um, always there will be two identical bases. So in this case, two squares. In this case, two triangles. In this case, two uh, hexagons. Uh, another characteristic uh, or, or terminology is that if these are the bases, the other four faces, in this case, are all called lateral faces. Uh, here, you have two identical bases and three lateral faces. Here you'd have two identical hexagonal bases and six lateral faces. Now these are called right prisms because their base and their lateral edge is perpendicular. This is perpendicular. This is perpendicular. So in other words, if you were to place it on its base, the lateral uh, edges, the lateral faces would be perpendicular to that base. Now this is what mostly we deal with uh, because it's easy to calculate because then you have this nice perpendicular uh, relationship or height. The other thing, let's talk about height. Height is the distance between the two congruent bases. So Height in this case is what you would expect it to be here. Um, you think of height ground up, right? But in this case, the bases are laying kind of across from each other here. So the height would actually be from here to here, not this. This would be the height of the base of the, tri the, the triangle, but it would not be the height of the prism. And so here, again, you would have your height along here. Now just to show you an example of oblique, oblique means not perpendicular. This is a prism as well, it has two identical bases, but the lateral edge is not perpendicular at some other angle. Now Cavalieri came along and said, hey, let's talk about how do we compare these kinds of things. And he said the volumes of these two prisms will actually be equal when they have the same height and the cross sections will have the same area. So in other words, uh, if th these two here had the same area and you stack them continuously having the same area for the same amount of height, you get the same amount of volume. In other words, if I took a cross sectional cut right here and that matched the area of the cross-sectional cut right here, and they keep stacking, you get the same volume. Here are a couple of visual effects of that. So here's a, a, a stack of CDs, a CD cases. This would be, the idea of stacking would be to find one, uh, one area, one area, and then multiply it by the stacking of all of those together. So Volume is calculated, with prisms at least, as one base area. So big B stands for base area times the height. In other words, one CD case stacked five times. So one area times the height. Now again, Cavalieri said that that, that would give you the same answer as if I bump these and give them a little bit of a, 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 a sideways look to them, an oblique look to them. Is that even though I'm at an angle now, it's still uh, the stacking of those equal areas to make one volume. Um, the same is true about my business cards. Here's, I could find uh, one business card's area, multiply it by how many there are, and that would give me the same answer as if I kind of bump it and make it look like this. That's kind of a cool thing. The, the volume would be the same. Or a ream of paper, I could bump it. And again, the idea is find the area of one sheet. So let's say this is eight by 11, so 88 
centimeter, uh, well, let's say inches squared. And then I would multiply that 88 by the height, and I would get the volume. So let's go take a look at some examples here. You'll, you'll see uh, it up close. All right, uh, as we just kind of introduced this whole idea of three-dimensional uh, measurement uh, moves us into the world of volume. And uh, just to get used to some language, as you've already, you've already kind of introduced, but we talk about faces, um, not necessarily sides, but I sometimes misspeak there. But often we say faces for three-dimensional. you got edges where two faces meet. A vertex is uh, where more than two, uh, well, where edges, I guess, intersect would be the way to say that. Um, <clears throat> so you got prisms. Characteristics you can see that are common in prisms, and this is very important, is that they will have two parallel uh, opposite faces. So here are the two squares. There are actually other possible bases there. Here are the two triangles are opposite and parallel and congruent, and so they are uh, the bases. Bases are not what they're sitting on. Now, yes, I'm sitting on the triangle, and yes, I'm sitting on the square. But notice here, I'm sitting on this rectangle, but the bases are the two congruent, opposite, parallel uh, planes. The, the two bases are those hexagons. Uh, in this shape, you can actually use a couple of different bases because there are many opposite, parallel, congruent uh, faces in that shape. But this would be called the cube, best name for it. Triangular, prism, hexagonal, prism, um, rectangular, prism. And uh, again, this idea of bases, uh, bases and heights. Um, these are called right prisms because they are their base and uh, lateral edges are um, perpendicular. Uh, let me explain what a lateral edges, uh, lateral sides are. So bases are opposite, parallel, congruent. Um, and then the other sides, the in this case, the three other sides, this one, that one, and this one over here, are called the lateral faces. So here the lateral faces would be the four re rectangles there. Here the lateral faces would be the six rectangles there. So you have bases as faces and lateral faces as well. Now these are also prisms, but they're oblique. And what oblique means is that the angle between um, the, the base and the lateral edges are not, uh, not perpendicular. So these are not perpendicular locations, whereas you'll notice in these ones they were all perpendicular. Now if you want to come up with a formula uh, for these guys, um, there's a very cool technique, which we kind of already showed you, so I'm going to move quickly. But this idea of stacking, uh, whether you think about stacking CD cases or whether you talk about stacking paper or money or um, little squares or whatever, these would stack up to create a volume. So the idea is the stacking principle is if you had one uh, triangular shape, that would be an area, so this would be an area, and then you're going to stack it that many times, and you would fill the entire space to give you volume. Here, if we had that one base, and we stacked it many times uh, through many cross-sections of that, you would fill it in and give you volume. Same thing here. So actually, volume is a very easy formula in this world. It's basically one base, one hex, one square, one triangle, and then times the height. In other words, just keep stacking it and stacking it all the way for that entire height to fill in the shape. Now, a key, a key idea came along by the Cavalieri principle. Cavalieri said you can compare volumes of shapes and determine if they're the same or not. And he said one way you can determine that is if the cross-sections of two solids, a 3D shape, um, if you are in parallel planes, he basically said that if, if the cross sections are the same area of value throughout the entire identical height, then the volume 
has to be the same because if they're over the same height and the cross sections all have the same area then the shapes have to have the same volume so even though one might be a right um, prism and the other is an oblique one if those cross-sectional slices all are equal then then the volumes will be equal so in this case the heights are the same here the cross-sectional values are equal and so these have the same volume and I guess that makes sense doesn't it? if you take your CD case and just push it and you get kind of a, a diagonal like that you can still see all those shapes still there getting stacked and placed upon each other and that's true also with um, with our friend the cylinder is the stacking principle in this case isn't a square or a rectangle or a triangle but it's a circle and you would just stack them on top of each other so it's one circle that's one base times its height exactly the same idea as the, as the prism and here again cavalry would say that these two have the same volume because they have the same height and their and their their cross sections have equal um, amounts of area so these would be congruent um, or equal sorry uh, volumes